And you've mentioned Randy there. I know you've done a lot over the years to keep his name alive and <laughs> keep his music front and centre as well. And he still holds such a an incredible place in everybody's hearts for his music and his his ability and every everything he brought to people and his joy and everything like that. And his mm-hmm. his music and his playing really does live on, doesn't it? Yeah, and and, and it's again I, what I consider a consciousness. Yeah, that I learned that from Randy. I'm I'm, what, I'm, I'm the only musician that got to play with him in both Choir Riot. And Ozzy, the only two bands that he, you know, that of renown that people know of, you know, and uh, he actually made some Japanese recordings, yeah, with the uh, with with Choir Riot. So, uh, and you know, the more the more people know about Randy and what made Randy's music so timeless the more they know they learn about his consciousness the more they're going to be able to take with them it's not just about the music it's about the consciousness that created that music you know the belief system you know of like you know having integrity in your life across the board not just with career but also in your whole life have integrity be your backbone yeah definitely and in terms of randy everyone knows his music and it, it's, it's fabulous playing and and everything he came up with there but in terms of him as a person i mean what was he like was he was he laid back was he was he driven was he serious was he funny what what kind of person was he because you obviously knew him really well yeah uh his demeanor okay if you're going to talk about his demeanor uh he had the demeanor which is what i really consider him a teacher because even when he performed live in front of thousands of people, he always held the guitar and he played it like he's showing this. This, this is what I'm playing. He's not like, even <laughs> though he was I, coming yeah. up with some, yeah, because, you know, he was coming up with some groundbreaking techniques, the way that he played. So somebody else could say, oh, I don't want anybody to steal, you know, what I'm doing. So I'm going to like, I'm going to move around. And no, he had a clarity. He always kept, the fretboard, his fingering, his playing, very clear, leaning the instrument forward so you could get a closer look. And so Randy, see, he's the only musician I've ever played with that came from a musical family, professors, not just musicians, but professors. And they built a music school, which is still operating. It's called Musonia. In, it says North Hollywood, the suburb of Los Angeles. And... I, I it's it's when I think back of Randy, it's hard for me to to to, to think of a time when he was not holding a guitar. Yeah. Let's say when, when we're flying, okay, we, you know, we're on a plane, he's not holding a guitar, or when we're going to the mall, he's not holding around. He, he's gonna he's gonna grab it and he's gonna play it and he's gonna be talking with you, smoking a cigarette and playing that guitar. And that's <laughs> how that's that's where the conversation came from. You know, and so I so when I started teaching at Musonia, I I got to see a whole different side of Randy because before that, only time that I would see him was either at the gigs or a rehearsal, and a rehearsal was very structured because we didn't have any, uh, a whole lot of time. We rehearse the set forwards and backwards, and then we worked on any original song for about half an hour, and then we did it again the next day. Meanwhile, Randy had been already playing for eight hours at the school with he had a lot of students you know so all day long that's all he did he played there was no distractions like you know social media or anything like that no it was just a focus on the music and um, you know no distractions talking discussing you know posting about politics or religion or you know who's going out with who and stuff like that on the internet no it's just no we, we, we couldn't even think of it of a time where humanity was going to be experiencing that. Uh, this is about 45 years ago. So, so with Randy, it was basically when I started teaching there, it's like, I, you know, I saw him play clay, acoustic guitar, classical guitar for the first time. And I go, I didn't know you played that. And he says, yeah, it doesn't quite fit what we're doing with Choir Rise. So I just play it when I'm here in between lessons. Yeah, he yeah. would just, you know, sit there and practice and read. You know, he, you know, he, 
he grew up with with professors, so he went through the whole academia of music, you know, just learning the fundamentals and building on it, you know, to the point that at, at his age, uh, he already, you know, he had a, he he was teaching harmony theory, composition, sight reading, all of the above, just like a regular, you know, professor, you know, and. Um, so that is a side that I got to experience and really got became aware of his musical integrity because it was unstoppable, you know. And then everything else, how he carried himself, you know. I mean, I it's it's, it's I, I've never read anywhere online any ne negative comments about Randy yeah. Rose. And he met a lot of people, you know. He met a lot of people. He touched a lot of hearts. If a fan would wait for him, uh. Uh, after sound check outside the arena, he would always stop, talk to them, especially if they were students, you know, like people who were learning, you know, musicians who were in the process of, of learning. Uh, he would always answer questions. And as a matter of fact, I have a little story. One time we were, uh, we were, uh, this is the, the Blizzard of Oz tour. And, uh, we were in Victoria, Canada, which is Western Canada, you know, around Vancouver in that area. And we were walking around. It was summertime. It was a beautiful day. And we were walking from the hotel to wherever the, uh, everybody was hanging, you know, the crew and the band and the rest of the guys in the band. And we, Randy comes across this, this young man carrying a, a guitar shaped box, a cardboard box. And he goes to Randy. Oh, you're Randy Rhodes? And he goes, yeah. Because, you know, we, they knew we were playing yeah. the following day, you know, in uh, uh, in Victoria. So so he goes, oh, you know, I, I love your music and I've been listening to the record. And he goes, uh, you know, you know that solo in uh, Goodbye to Romance. Uh, can, can you show me that? Now, at that time, we had not added Goodbye to Romance to the set. So Randy goes, well, it's been a while since I played this, but uh, yeah, sure. So he picks up the guitar out of the box. The guy, you know, gives him the guitar. And he starts, like, trying to remember how it goes. And the guy goes, oh, that's okay. Here, let me show you. <laughs> so, so he goes, oh, he shows Randy how to play it. And Randy looks at me, he's kind of, like, laughing. And he goes, that's the last time I'm going to give somebody a lesson in the middle of the street. <laughs> and we just carry it on. <laughs>